30 years, we had almost 3,000 elected officials, sheriffs, judges, people that signed the money. Every aspect of American life, black people, we in because we voted. We voted. And if you don't vote, you have no agency. You have no right to say anything. We give you COVID and put you in a house somewhere. You follow me? Did I say it? Did I say it? Yes, I said it. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Here's, here's the first black center. We also got another black center, Josiah Hall. He, his brother worked at Far East. And we don't know where his grave is. 1876, he buys a newspaper in Gainesville. You follow me? And becomes his publisher and runs for office twice. Was almost assassinated when he got elected. Okay? Man, I love this brother here, Kelso. And he's the second black senator from Mississippi. Lance Kelso Bruce. So recently, Khalil and I found D.K. Bruce. So now we have authenticated this brother. That's what we do with everybody. To get in, you gotta you gotta come through the you gotta come through the right club. We don't let you in just because you're talking. You know you gotta have some, you know <laughs> the great. And these brothers, I mean, it's just incredible in the truth. All because we voted. Okay. I, this is my man. Here. <laughs> 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 and you know what? You should be proud. He should be proud. Okay? Richard Harvey King. Now, we also have the signature. Of, we don't have people to show. We got the signature of these brothers. What we like to do, we just, we have a saying, we won't get it, we want to get as close to the person without crawling in the grave. Right now? <laughs> That's what we try to do. Now, we ain't getting to the grave. Okay? Okay. All right. But Harvey Kane did this. This is the Enterprise Railroad Company. So Harvey Kane, the congressman, he and some brothers got together, formed the company. The Enterprise Railroad Company, and the company operated from 1875 to 1899. This is the closest we've been able to do with the company. Well, this is a receipt showing that it existed in Charleston, South Carolina. That's the only way you get in. You can prove it, okay? Henry Flipper, first graduate of West Point, never was spoken to in four years at West Point. And I tell black people, don't tell me you can't graduate. This brother graduated and nobody spoke to him for four years. That's what matters. Mm. Not all this foolishness. We have a saying, obstacles are those things that get in the way when you take your eye off the ball. Mm. Let's try to say that. Obstacles are those things that get in the way when you take your eye off the ball. Sit on that for a little while, okay? Buffalo Soldier Parade Fest, 1888. We just got a, did you put the breastplate in here? Yes, yes, yes. No, I know it's there. Oh, not in here, no. Okay. But we got a breastplate of an actual, I didn't know what a breastplate was, but let us say this way. Okay. <laughs> but a breastplate of a Buffalo Soldier's horse uh, that, uh, that's in this. It's beautiful. Oh, so we're just trying to tie the story more. Okay. Blessing versus Ferguson. Blessing was a light skinned brother, part of my color. He tried to get on a, a, a street car in New Orleans. And they, they put him off. They said, Blessing, come on, you know better. <laughs> you know you ain't going to ride on the car. So Blessing was working with the NAACP. The NAACP sued to break down segregated uh, uh, law. And guess what happened? It goes all the way to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said, Well, you still can't ride the street car. And that's where separate but equal came in. Separate but equal came in. Okay? I love these brothers. From 1860s to the 1960s, the people that I think populated the black middle class probably more than anybody were the Pullman Court. Because they were the ones that learned all of the etiquette because they took care of white passengers. And they brought all that back to their communities. 
Do you know the most popular paper paper in West Palm Beach was the Pittsburgh Courier? Because the train line came from Pittsburgh to West Palm Beach. So the, the Pullman Corners would, you know, would bring it and drop it off, and they would just distribute it there. So we read the Pittsburgh Courier because it, the trains came from there, but it came from the Pullman Porters. Okay. Yes, we rode bicycles. <laughs> <laughs> and we were the best at riding bicycles. The world's fastest bicycle ride. Marshall uh, Major Taylor. He was the fastest bicycle rider in America till white people decided he was so fast that we were not let you race him. They ran him out of race and they ran him in Europe. He became the fastest there. You know what I love about us? I don't care what you do. We can have rules or no rules. We still do okay. And I know in our psyche, we really don't care. We're gonna make this thing work. Because if we can get through the transatlantic and slavery, we can have all of the above, okay? As long as we stay together and as long as we are fighting for the same principle of equality, okay? Yes, we were black cowboys. Fully 25% of all cowboys in America were black. I have a saying. If they were white, they would have been called cow men. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sit on that for a little bit. Okay? All right. <laughs> yes, we rode horses too. <laughs> we rode thoroughbreds. The first Kentucky Derby winner was Oliver Lewis, 1875. <laughs> 15 of the 23 riders in the first Kentucky right. Derby were black. Okay? Jimmy Wings, I love this brother. Now, we got a new piece. We, we, where you get, get that? When did we get a new piece? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I have to introduce I'll, I'll this. I'll find out just like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a piece from 1863 of a brother with a thoroughbred horse named Beaver. Uh, oh, okay. Right. Okay. I thought you were talking about Jimmy Wings. All right. <laughs> okay, here's a quick one Jimmy Wingsfield, Louisville, Kentucky. The 16 of 17 children of a two-parent household, frail, undersized, begins to look, look at horse racing and begins to say, I want to learn more. He becomes a trainer. He cleans out the stall. He does all this stuff. And before you know it, he begins to make a connection with horses. I'll skip ahead. He becomes the 1901 and 1902 Kentucky Derby winner. He was so good that they banned him from racing. You know, they took bicycle in from us too. You know I mean? So we have a saying, it's called the jockey syndrome. The jockey syndrome says, when we get too good, we change the rules. Listen to that. The only reason we haven't cracked corporate America because there are no rules. The reason that we're good in almost everything else, the military, because they got rules. You follow know I me? Mean? Any of the sports, they have rules. Entertainment has rules. You sell more tickets, you do okay. I see Brother Quentin there with the blue note. Y'all go to the place tonight. Help him out. Raise your hand, let everybody see you. Okay? Right. That's what this is about. Okay? If you get too good, we change the rules. That's what we did in Zero. We said, we're going to form our own club. It's called the Zero Black and Party. Five minutes, okay. Real quick. So anyway, 1971, there were less than 2,000 black folks. So myself and a bunch of us, mostly brothers, but some sisters, we decided we were going to form our own club called the Xerox Black and Clover. Evelyn, Wayne, uh, my brother, what's your name again? R.J. R.J., 1972. I mean, the, the black Xerox family is just unbelievable all over the country. And for the next 20 years, we pushed up on zero. We said, get out of South Africa. We got them out of South Africa. We got them the first, we got them the first uh, board member, Vernon Joy. okay? And over the next 20 years, we put 14,000 black people in zero. The most diverse company in America. And that resulted in the first black female CEO, Ursula Burns. Yeah. 
that all came out of the Xerox vacuum pumps. Okay? And all came out of the Xerox. And I'm so proud of what we were able to do because you know what? For 20 years, we were the rock solid. We said we're going to change this, but we're going to change it by being the best at what we do, and then we weren't going to take any foolishness. Matter of fact, David Kearns told me he was the CEO. He said, Carl, I don't know how you got this high up in this company. <laughs> he said, because guys like you never get here. Because we cut you up. You know what I mean? I said, I understand. And I almost got cut a few times. Okay? But I was relentless about what we wanted to do. And I believe that there was a world outside of Xerox. You tell Miller, I can never see Kinsey and Xerox. Yeah. Right? Okay. And we're going to wrap it up. Oh, let me finish with Jimmy. Okay, okay, Jimmy. Yeah, go back. So, because this is a good story. Jimmy. I mean, so Jimmy wins the 1982. Microphone. So he wins the 1982. Next time. You ought to hear him do this. Shoot. Okay, so 1902, he wins the Kentucky Derby. And they man. So he goes to Russia, becomes a Russian child. I guess he spoke Russian, but let me go back. But he married, he married a sister in Louisville. Went to Russia, married a Russian woman. Now, I'm, I'm telling you, the story reads like, I mean, it's just a beautiful story. So then he goes to Poland, becomes the Polish champ. Every time there was a war, he goes to another country and marries another woman. <laughs> I'm trying, I ain't lying on the brother. I mean, so, so he ends up in England and marries, I think, Marie, uh, a, a French girl, and becomes the English champ. So let me tell you what the problem is. He wins 2,600 races, and he's not in the, in the, in the, in the racing hall of fame. You got me? You just get wiped out. Remember what I told you about what Neil said? You're in the palm picture, they take you out. Who? Um. Sergeant Fleetwood, who was the first Medal of Honor winner, his daughter tried to donate his Medal of Honor to the Smithsonian. They said, we don't have room for it. Uh -huh. uh, come on. So she pushes up against it. So his boss says, we'll take it. But we'll only take it if you don't say he's a Negro. Uh -huh. so, so to her credit, she said, you only take it if you give him an attribution. Because if you don't say he's a black person, everybody will think he's a white person. Because that's why everybody in this country think anything that happened, white people did it. Because we are not in the history books. We don't have the attribution. That's why the Smithsonian is important. And all of these museums that are telling these stories, you follow me, that don't have agency to be told. Am I, am I talking to you? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, I was okay. Now I gotta go. <laughs> so, okay. All right. So, so what do we do now, sir? Uh, <laughs> say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a question, sir. What do you do when you get new information? And that really is what we are asking you all to consider. 
What do you do when you get new information? Share. Uh. You change your mind. Mm -hmm. You share it. You challenge people who are telling falsehoods. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you. That's exactly what I was hoping.